No, Larry. Are you sure? It was just a minute? And not slightly longer? Your very existence being a contradiction, I'm not sure if you can grasp this or not. That's actually really mean. Hey, what? Hey, Edgy. You make me sound like some sort of alien. But your testimony is conclusively contradictory. The problem here is time. I've never had the best timekeeping, you know? Three minutes after Billy leaves on foot, you follow him on your bicycle. How long does it take for you to catch up with him? Terrible at those. This is much more simple. You saw the lightning strike Dusky Bridge and immediately went to see what had happened, is that correct? Yeah, well, I wasted about five minutes first, but more or less. I have the weather data from the night of the murder here. According to this, the lightning fell at 10.45 p.m. You say it takes less than five minutes from the shack to Dusky Bridge. Meaning you probably got there at around 11 p.m. That's all sounds about right, I guess. And then Nick showed up and did his following act. That is impossible. What do you mean? 11 p.m. is when the murder occurred at Hasakura Temple. Thus, Wright was still there in the courtyard. There's no way that Larry could have encountered him in Dusky Bridge at that time. No, excuse me, I, I have an objection. You do? Edgy, how many times do I have to say this? I'm not Larry, I'm Loris. <laughs> it has not been proven that the murder occurred at 11 p.m. The, the sister only said around 11, in which case it could have been earlier than that. Watch your footing there, Miss Franziska von Karma. The slope ahead is slippery. But there's still no way that Phoenix, that Wright could have been at Dusky Bridge at 11 p.m. And why not? It's clearly written here in the weather data report. It took around 30 minutes for the bridge to burn out. Therefore, the bridge must have been burning until at least 11.15 p.m. Which means what exactly? I did not see the bridge as it was burning that night. He did not arrive there until... After the flames had died down. Larry. You arrived at the bridge at 11 p.m. Wright did not make it there, at it, uh, there until at least 11.15 p.m. Are you still trying to hide something from us? What happened during those missing 15 minutes? Uh, uh, I feel like I just woke up. I guess I was still sleeping after all. Pinch me. She can whip you. Order. So there's a missing 15 mi minutes prior to Phoenix's ar uh, arrival. I hardly see that as a problem. If, uh, hardly see that as much as a problem. Yeah, not much of a problem at all. Really? The bridge is burning before your eyes and there's a phone right next to it. Why then did you not report the incident? Did you simply just watch the bridge burn? Some people just like watching the world burn, your honor. That is the problem here. Even after the bridge burns out, he was still there. He simply stood there and didn't report anything. That's what it sounds like. This might be Larry we were talking about, but even he is incapable of being so stupid. There has to be a reason for his inaction. Edgy, I think it's about time I got serious with you, dude. <laughs> okay. Just as I thought you've been playing with us all this time. Listen, um, I'm gonna tell you everything. Are you sure you want to hear it all? Yes. I may really say it at this time. Everything. <laughs> then to say it. Very well, I have a terribly bad feeling about this, however. Let's have the witness finally give us the whole truth. Now, for this 15 minute gap, what were you doing, the witness? Fantasizing about some girl showing up. I'm a do do um, I'm an artist. What do you think I was doing? Sketching in front of the bridge. I was whipped up in a frenzy of art. The shock and awe that I was feeling, I transferred it all directly into the page. Before I realized that the flames had gone out and then he came running out. Hmm. I suppose artists can be strange folk. That's right, now I'm willing to sacrifice everything in order to draw the perfect sketch. Including the truth from the sound of it. Mr. Edgeworth, has this removed the last of your doubts? Not at all, Your Honor. One very large doubt still remains. And what would that be? 
This is surprisingly un uh, surprisingly believable story, especially considering the source. So why do you think he needed to hide it from us until now? I intend to drag the reason out of him. <laughs> You'll regret this, Edgy. Tell us, Larry. My name's Larry, got it? Mistakes like that are what keep me keep you from being popular with the ladies like I am. Just who exactly are you? I'm Laurie, it's apprentice extraordinaire. That's what he calls himself in any case. You are an artist? Of course, I'm an artist, uh, the real thing. Yet again, that's what he calls himself. Names mean nothing. There's only one issue I care to discuss. What were you doing? That's a very big issue indeed. Sketching. The burning bridge. The burning bridge and everything that came with it. What came with it? You want to hear this from my lips, do you, Edgy? You'll regret this. The sketch of mine is... Bah. Enough. Just take that ridiculous sketch of yours out already, witness. What are you talking about? I, I don't know what you mean. It does indeed appear to be the fastest solution. I'll leave it to you, Mr. Edward. Which I do. I've got a terrible feeling that the instant this sketch is revealed, the entire world may be changed by what is depicted. Fucking look at it. Larry, I wonder if you could show us your sketch, please. Oh well, even I couldn't imagine it turn out like this. Imagine what? Now Loris's debut would take place here today, like this. Ouch! Show it now! Okay, uh, but steal yourselves. This is the world of Larice. There's someone jumping off the bridge. Uh, um, well, so this, this is Dusky Bridge, correct? Quite a large bridge, isn't it? Your response, Miss Von Karma. Yes, well... It's a better drawing than I expected. Isn't it? Isn't it? I struggled to reproduce those flames. I really did. Yes, I'm sure you did. Mm, this is going to get ugly. No one has the bravery to bring it up, it seems. This mysterious flying object. Yeah, there's a person jumping off the bridge. Larry? What? The bur burning bridge is fine, but what is that unfortunate looking figure? Ah, you spotted that? I thought you might. However much I might want to ignore it, I can't. It's Iris, of course, Iris. What? I wish she'd take better care of herself. We have to plan for our future, you know? What would have happened her if she had injured herself flying like that? Larry, please answer this next question. Honestly. Okay. Are you really claiming to have seen this? Are you claiming to have seen the silhouette of the defendant flying over a bridge that was engulfed by flames? Yep, that's why I saw him. That's why I drew it, I'm a real artist. Are you? Hi, the girl, she's really flying really high <laughs> up in this picture. <laughs> Fucking judge. Ah, what was that for? This is all a bad dream. I was hitting you on the cheek to test that theory. Please whip your own cheek from now on if you wish to test your wild theories. Anyway, no court of law will ever, ever acknowledge that people can fly. Actually, there is some precedent for this. She was flying pretty high, my sweet Iris. She was about 30 feet above the bridge, at least. It was really something to see. This has to be some kind of mistake. Mr. Edgeworth, please bring the witness back down to the earth. What? Me? This witness is your friend, is he not? Accessory to foolishness, Miles Edgeworth. Let's bring back the cross-examination by force if necessary. Mr. Edgeworth, I expect you to expose the obvious contradiction here. Yes, Your Honor. Looks like I've got another reason to remember this moron. 
Oh, what do you think of my debut piece? Get that thing away from me. Now hurry up and cross-examine. The white hood fluttering. Oh, thank God. Objection! Sit the fuck down. Sit the fuck down. Larry, what did you really see that night? Not that I particularly care. In your position, that's just being irresponsible. I drew exactly what I saw. I'll give you the whole, uh, whole dollar that it's the truth. One whole dollar, thank you, Larry. If that is truly the case, then there is one thing that we can say for certain. What might that be? That the person who flew over the bridge could not have been the defendant Iris. What? What do you mean? I don't understand. Nah. -uh. A foolhardy foolie folly of a foolish statement by an equally foolishly foolhardy fool. How exactly can you make this claim? Tell us, Larry. According to this picture, the individual whom you saw, uh, say you saw, was wearing a hood, correct? Of course she was. That rundown shack is quite away from the bridge. The hood is what told me that this floating angel was my iris. The hood is my darling iris, and iris is my darling hood. Ah. Seems there are bigger fools in this world than the one at the defense's bench. Larry, there is something you need to be made aware of. On the night of the murder, Iris wasn't wearing her hood. She'd given it to Wright as a gift. Are you going to change your story now? Perhaps suggest it was Wright who took flight? What are you talking about? I think you understand what I mean just fine. Why? Why Nick have Iris' hood? Huh? Edgy, what's going on with Iris and Nick? Sorry, buddy. Why, you Nick, you dog. You're the one that was moving on Miss uh, Delight the other fucking case. Fuck off. She was mine. Fuck Ron. I do believe that this unbelievably mysterious sketch is destined to disappear, dis uh, discredited, and discarded straight into the garbage. Heh. 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 Ah, yeah. What is it now, witness? Feels like I've been waiting 25 years for this very day to come. Edgy, today is the day I get to completely stupefy you. What? What is the meaning of your girlburst, witness? I hate to have to do this to you, but I do have some definitive evidence. You keep saying that. Definitive evidence? Iris did indeed come flying over the bridge. And I, Loris, shall prove it. I didn't expect to ask this again, but we shall be needing your testimony once again. Tell us anything you know concerning the fin as, de as depicted in this sketch. And show us your evidence that the nightmare was actually a reality. Okay, I hope you're ready, Edgy. Because I'm going to feed you a whopping serving of whopping serving of pain. You've been serving us a whopping serving of pain this whole time. Trust me. When I reached Dusky Bridge, she was already gone. I was so worried, I frantically searched all over for her. That led me to finding a brutal, beautiful crystal sphere, half buried in snow. I'm sure that Iris was simply wearing a spare hood. After all, no one else could have lost a crystal, crystal sphere that night. A crystal sphere? This one. Pretty, isn't it? Uh, but finders keepers. That sphere, where did you find it? Let me see, around here somewhere, it looks about right. It was half buried in snow. It pretty much stopped glowing by then. But there was still some fa falling as I walked to the bridge. Hmm. The court accepts this crystal sphere. That's mine, okay? I want it back afterwards. There's something on it, isn't there? Oh my, it's a blood stain. What? Blood stain? Yeah, it's from our staff. You ready, Edgy? By tomorrow morning, you'll be calling me uh, Master Larry. Yeah, I like the sound of that. No one's gonna push me around anymore. Didn't you want to be called Loris uh, only a few moments ago? 
Let's go ahead and skip over to there. No one else but Iris, right? Can I press in this? Thank you. Larry. That night, there was someone. Someone who lost a crystal sphere. There was. Who? Who was that stupid idiot? Miss Elise. The mentor to a stupid idiot. The victim. I have a photo over here. And on the end of her staff, you can see a familiar looking crystal sphere. Hey. That's my photograph. Give it back. Ouch. A crystal sphere like that is quite easy to find. I have one just like it on my brooch. They look nothing alike. In any case, please take a look at this. This is the victim's snap found at the crime scene of the crime. And the crystal sphere is gone. What? 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 Just what does this mean? If anyone jumped or flew across that bridge that night, it certainly was not Iris after all. She was not wearing her hood, and more importantly, the crystal sphere found at the landing site was not hers either. That means the one who flew and dropped the sphere was the victim, Miss Elise. No. A fool alongside another fool on a fool's errand to reach a foolish conclusion. First of all, this sketch, which I prefer to call scribble, is ridiculous. People cannot fly, thus it is rejected. You can't do that, I saw it with my own two eyes. In this crystal sphere, this is nothing more than a red herring. You honestly believe that? Give it some thought and I'm sure you'll realize it as well, Miss Miles Edgeworth. Elise was in her room on the night of the murder. There's no reason for her to go to Dusky Bridge. Therefore, this sphere cannot be related to this case. That is all. Miss Francisca von Karma. The only people who will accept that explanation are scatterbrains and clowns. Why are you pointing at me? The victim's crystal sphere was found near the bridge on the night of her murder. Yeah, you expect us to believe this has nothing to do with the case. With blood on it. That crystal sphere. It was probably thrown away at the bridge after the murder. After the murder? There is blood on the crystal is the sphere, isn't there? This naturally suggests that I was thrown away after the murder took place. The killer placed it there and to throw the investigation off the scent. The same reason they drew that ridiculous sketch. What? You mean... I'm the killer? No! Enough joking. Just when did this crystal sphere appear near the near the foot of the bridge? Unless this can be proven in some way, I refuse to believe that this related to the case. She makes a valid point. There is no evidence that Elise left Hazaka Temple that night. However, if somehow this crystal sphere can be proven to have been dropped before the victim was killed, then this case is going to transform into something else entirely. I can. Weather. You respond, Mr. Edgeworth. I want to hear your final opinion on this, uh, on the de de disposition of this crystal sphere. If it is not entirely related to the case, then this witness who called will have nothing more than a monumental waste of time. Prepare yourself for some very appropriate punishment, Miles Edgeworth. Can't prove it. Can't prove that the crystal sphere was dropped before the murders took place. Yes. I can. Can't prove it. That isn't the issue. To simply prove it. There's a, that's the only option. That's what he'd do. That's the way Phoenix Wright would do this. Your Honor, allow me to prove something to you. I will prove that this crystal sphere is a vital link to solving this case. You will do that. Now look in your eye. You remind me of Phoenix right when he is cornered. That should come as no surprise. Because right now I am Phoenix right now I am indeed cornered. I order you to present your evidence, Mr. Edgeworth. Evidence that proves that the crystal sphere was indeed dropped before the murder. Give me my... Mother data. Take that! Your response, Ms. Von Karma. 
Birds of a feather flock together. Are you familiar with this phrase? Miles Edgeworth. I think one such bird is calling for its fellow now. Go, go, Edgy! Do it, prove it, win, win, win. He's cheering. Just t though I'm listening to the ominous cause of ravens. So, Edgeworth, what will you do from here? One more chance, Your Honor. I can't turn it back bro, after coming all this way. I need to find proof that the ladder has been closed. Piece of shit. Take that! This crystal sphere is half buried in the snow, correct? That's right. If it hadn't sno stopped snowing, then it would have been game over. Again. Me presenting the snowing data, fuck off game, but whatever. The snow should have totally covered it. That's all I need to hear from you, Larry. Your testimony makes one thing quite clear. What? When the crystal sphere was dropped, it was snowing, even if it was ever so slightly. Snowing. On the other hand, let us look at the scene of the murder. As proven earlier today, there is no snow on the victim's body. Ah. Therefore, the crystal sphere must have been dropped before the murder. What? Order. The dude could have just buried in some of the snow and didn't bury it fully. That's what I'd argue. On the night of the murder, the victim did indeed go to Dusky Bridge, and there, something occurred that caused this crystal sphere to come loose. What? What could that have been? The sphere. There is some blood on it, isn't there? Allow me to raise a certain possibility at this junction. The real crime scene was near the foot of Dusky, Dusky Bridge. They took the snowmobile over there, killed her, and drove it back with her body. Dropped it out of the roof, maybe? Or a room? And then stabbed it with Shishido? We still don't have the real murder weapon, though. The murder didn't play it take place in the uh, Hazakura Temple Courtyard. Only a fool would suggest a foolish piece of absolute foolishness. Let's do the fool, and which part is so foolish, Miss Von Karma? Have you been playing it, paying any attention this whole time, Miles Edgeworth? The sister saw everything. She saw the victim being killed by the defendant in the Hazakura Temple Courtyard. Maybe a reenactment. That's not exactly true, now is it? To put it more precisely, when she what she saw was the murder weapon being removed from the victim's body. That's the same thing! No, it isn't. You said it yourself. Very little blood is actually lost at the moment of the blade's insertion. If you want to talk about when the most blood would be lost from a body, that would be when the blade's removed. If that statement is uh, correct, then Dusky Bridge could very easily be the scene of the murder. The murder weapon was not removed, thus there was no bleeding. You're forgetting one vital thing, Mr. Edgeworth. Miles Edgeworth. Elise's body was found in Hazakura Temple. On foot, it takes 15 minutes to travel from Dusky Bridge to Hazakura Temple. You mean to suggest someone carried the body all that way? Yes. I made it this far. The only place to take it is this is to the end. I just need to prove the possibility happened, as I presume. Now, if the defense is ready, the court would like to hear an explanation. Please show us the method by which the victim's body was carried. Uh, I need to uh, track photo. Yes. Take that! On that snowy night, there's only one uh, way that body could have been moved. The snowmobile. As we know, the snowmobile was used that night. It was as explained as having been uh, used to dispose of the murder weapon, but it could have been used to carry a body. Order! And I... This! This is completely unacceptable, Miles Edgeworth. You've dug yourself your own grave. What do you mean? The only one who could have used the snowmobile was the defendant. She's the one who moved the body. Doesn't that put the final nail in her coffin? <laughs> You're too late, Francisca von Karma. And in fact, the defense has proven something else entirely. We have shown that this case requires further investigation. 
What? Where was the victim really killed? If her body was moved, where, whatever for? And finally... Just what does this image mean? Do we even need to think about that? Such a creature could never see the truth, let alone describe it. This witness certainly sits on one of the lowest possible branches of humanity. However, he would never utter a lie that could hurt a girl with whom he is enamored. He drew this, so it was something that actually happened. The event stands still on firm on this point. Edgy. Thank you. That settles it then. I cannot give a verdict under these circumstances. <sighs> Don't eat the desk. Right. I seem to have fulfilled my part in this. It's just as I thought, Francisca von Kummer. You make a wonderful partner. Excuse me. There's one reason, and one alone for me being here, to expose the darkness lurking in this case, and then pass it on to right. Really? That's what this was all about? You could have just told me from the very beginning. Now I wouldn't have had a Francis Miles Edgeworth. I don't care about what you were here to do. This was my chance to finally grind you under my heel. Shame that your chance seems to slip by you. What a shame. Ah, Francie. This is all your fault. Such a terrible witness. You're an affront to all legal systems around the world. I demand satisfaction. Poor Larry. I cannot believe that the witness is testimony released to an actual event. However, there has to be some sort of answer for the questions it raises. Have his words were here today been the truth or the lies? Next time we gather in this courtroom, those are the matters that shall be addressed. I'm counting on thorough investigations by both the defense and the prosecution. And with this, the rest is up to you, right? <laughs> Bard's now adjourned. Man, this is... This trial is crazy, man. Absolutely nuts. I have no idea what the fuck is going on. There's so many moving parts. It's so little that it makes sense right now. A oh, hottie clinic. I am not in here. Oh. Oh my god. That's an IV thing up there. Wow. I didn't even realize he was in a hospital. I thought he was just like at his desk or something. I didn't even notice. Still up at this hour reading through the trial record of a certain case. It's the first case my mentor Mia had ever handed it, handled in a court of law. The horrifying truth I refuse to accept is holding me hostage here within this pages. Wow. Dahlia Hawthorne. What I have read, I don't want to believe. What is written here? This wasn't the Dahlia I knew. After falling into the Eagle River, I was somehow miraculously saved. But I ended up catching a cold that seemed to knock me around the world and back. I feel dizzy. My eyes are ringing, my throat burns, and my head's on fire. But I will recover. I have to recover by this afternoon. And to meet with the most ill-tempered witness imaginable. I know that he will be able to help me, somehow. to the bridge.